Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another spectacular episode of the greatest spectacle to hit your computer screens on Tuesdays at the exact time. Well, we're a little late, a little sick. It's normally at 6.30, but 6.31 today. Going by, loving life. I am the ranking himself, Austin Moorhead, joined, of course, by Oracle Vo and Noble Knight Greg. And we have a special, special guest for tonight. Ryan, welcome to the show, Thank my you. friend. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I am I told my brother earlier, I'm not sure if I'm offended or uh, honored to be the Star Wars nerd you bring in, but I'm, <laughs> happy, I'm here. So it's there. <laughs> hey, I'm happy that you're a Star Wars nerd. I like to think we talked about this a little bit before. I like to think I'm a Star Wars nerd. People like to disprove my theories, but that's about everything. People just see this crown and they <laughs> yeah. see the enemy. You're just a nerd. That's, they're just stupid. Yeah. They're that stupid is a fair crown. statement. Yes. Grind Project <laughs> said, "What's up, boys? I'm only here for Ryan, not Vo." Hey, well, Grind Project. Oh, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. Let's put it this way, Grime Project. I'm glad that you're here. So, <laughs> I know that your uh, work's got you busy, man. I understand. We all got them days. Uh, got to make that bread. I understand it, dude. Um, but yes, we are here another Tuesday in the books, uh, Ryan. Just so we uh, can put on some perspective. Last week, uh, our show was all about infomercials. Uh, okay. it, was, it was wonderful. Uh, and my girlfriend gave me the idea. I said, this is going to suck. And it was raw. It was awesome. It, I should probably just never doubt with- the queen. <laughs> queen knows what she's doing. I should probably listen to her more. So I digress, but yeah, I mean, we, I, I'm on a, I'm on a podcast too. And sometimes the topics that are like, we think it's me the stupidest turns out to be like our best. Yeah. Like we, we drafted top five al- uh, letters of the alphabet one time and it was electric. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. Well, I love it. Well, it's number one out of curiosity. Well, I I had one one and I went W because my last name's Wiederstam. One of my nicknames is Dub, so I had to go W. And you get a Dub, you eat a Dub like Jameis Winston. <laughs> There's a lot of things with W. I don't know. It's near the end of the alphabet. My mind. I, I was gonna say my mind would immediately go towards like like Wheel of Fortune route, like probably R S T L N E to start. Yeah, it's good. That's a, I didn't even think about that. I mean, I did. I think end up getting. I think all of those got into being drafted anyways, but <laughs> yeah. Not a bad thing. Um, I would go M personally, because my last name, but yeah. you know, you switch the M to W for Wumbo, Wumboing, <laughs> Wumboing, it's all around people look it up in the dictionary. Wombo, it's first grade. Wombo. It's he, first grade. He, he get wombos. <laughs> we all Comments Wombo. The- <laughs> Comments in the chat. Chip, uh, welcome. This is a friend. As Grind Project points out, it is Vo's sister's fiance. <laughs> so future yeah. brother, future brother, future brother. Correct, correct. To Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, how does it feel? How does it feel? How does it feel realizing that you're gonna be, you're gonna have Vo as a brother soon? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. I'm excited. I mean, we've been, I've been with uh, his sister for the last like seven years. So. Yeah, it's, 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 it's basically it's, family it's, already. Yeah, as I was saying, yes, it's, but, it's, yes, it's but, only a little bit of adjustment. Yeah, but that's you choosing his sister. You didn't choose him, though. That's the that's difference true. here. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm for. I'm fine with it, at least for now. At least <laughs> the old <laughs> yeah, argument. <for> now. <laughs> it's the old argument of you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's nose. There are some people that do both. Some people don't do either. Apparently, according to Chip, I don't have very many friends, so it's it's all in <laughs> retrospect. We can <laughs> confirm. Yes, we can I don't confirm. Think I have friends i don't know i saw there were people at bamboo bar for your birthday whether they're friends or just random people that you talk to i don't know oh yeah definitely yeah. like 20 bucks come in you know yeah i'll pay you yeah, have a good yeah. time <laughs> but um we got a good show to bring you guys today a little bit part two because we discussed this a lot of, i guess i should say part three part three we yeah on this but before i get any further uh, Vo, where are you located oh, as uh, you are alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this I makes me so happy. I do it. As, uh, as Greg. I could probably do. I could. I could Sorry. probably do it from memory if you want, Vo. Like, yeah, go, it would just go be fun for it. I'll, I'll fill in where you fill, where you miss. 
Rankings Court is live today from Union Fitness Studios, located on the North Shore of Pittsburgh. Union Fitness is more than a traditional gym. It's a place where you can transform yourself inside and out. With a variety of classes based around fitness, yoga, strength, and performance training, at Union Fitness, they believe that it's their duty to hold themselves and their clients to a higher standard. They practice what they preach and uphold the values, make Union Fitness the community that it is. Go to unionfitness.com today to sign up for a consultation. Through Union, there is strength. That's probably one of the most impressive that, things I've seen. That was on impressive. Show. Now, <laughs> from all the from- amount of times I've read it, somehow <laughs> it is now like stuck in my brain. So you're welcome. I'm all telling you, we just got to record and just keep playing it all the time. It's insane. Might as well, yeah. Um, Grind Project. I wasn't invited to Bamboo. That's on Ooh, me. Ooh, he wasn't. <laughs> I, wow. I didn't, listen, He's an older man than me. I understand them. them wow, now you're calling out his age? Hey, I get my age called out all the time. Sometimes I'm 28, sometimes I'm 75. It doesn't matter. You know what That's I'm saying? That's a big gap, though, bud. Like, we just we just consider Foringer old. That's you, true. you're all over the fucking place. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like, yeah, you're 75 <laughs> now. Yes. Uh, you are getting much praise, Greg, both from Grind Project and Mama Whiten. Uh, and Chip, just now, <laughs> uh, the ex employee couldn't do. Did Chip it? You you stop that. You're toxic. No, the ex employee, the ex employee who wrote the script couldn't remember how to do it when he filled in a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so I don't want to hear anything <laughs> you're, about you're my, toxic my loyalty already tonight, Chip. I don't know what's going on, mm-hmm. but um, yes, we got a wonderful show for you guys. Um, this is all I, with everything going on. This is Star Wars tonight. And I know we've done Star Wars, I think one of our very early episodes that we did. And then we brought uh, Ping on to discuss everything about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mm-hmm. So this is essentially part three of a Star Wars talk that I am very, very excited for. I know Ryan is a big, big fan. Cue the X-Wing in the background and the uh, This is the Way Mandalorian shirt. I mean, Ryan, what does Star Wars mean to you, man? Like when you when you think of Star Wars... What comes to mind? Well, so everyone when they're a kid, I know everyone on when they're a kid had those movies where you'd stay home from well, school sick. Since you're a little kid, you used to keep watching the same movies over and over again. Um, mm-hmm. I know like Bo and his sister have weird ones like My Uncle the Alien and <laughs> random ones that you watch. <laughs> we did uh, watch some weird ones. Yeah, uh, Mac and Me and stuff like that. Yeah. But for me, it, it was always the original trilogy on wow. uh, Star Wars. And so like, I, I don't know, like, I've been a huge fan since I was little. Um, my dad had them because he saw them live when they first came out. But then that's, he just, he liked them, but he didn't really, really love them like I did. And I kind of just took it and ran with it. So, I don't know, Star Wars, I went, when I was 20 years old, I went to Disney World, I met an actor in a Chewbacca costume, and I was the most <laughs> excited I've ever been in my life. I was like, wait, I'm 20. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm this excited. It's it. weird. But, like, it's a Star Wars. Just... Anything Star Wars gets me all excited and hyped up. Hey, I appreciate also, it. Also, I just need to point out, I need to point out real quick too, just to give a perception about how terrible of taste Bo has, Mac and Me is considered one of the worst movies ever. <laughs> on a, on almost <laughs> any Mac list that you look up, Mac and Me is considered one of the worst films that was you, ever made. We watched the, it recently, Mac though. Is, Paul Rudd showing Mac and Me clip yeah. on uh, <laughs> the best part about it. That's like the only yeah. thing people know about Mac and Me. <laughs> Prime Project points out in the chat, that's how my dad was too. My brother and I gravitated to it way more. It was my mom that was actually into Star Wars because my dad is the absolute worst at anything if it's not a uh, Jason Bourne, Liam Neeson action film. Uh, He gravitated way away from the sci-fi stuff, and it was more my mom's taste. I had the original trilogy. I found it one day in my closet on the original like VHS collection that I had with, uh, I remember cause Darth Vader's face was on the, uh, a new hope. Uh, Oh wow. This is going to bug me now. I want to say, I don't remember who was on, um, the empire strikes back, but I remember Jabba the Hutt was on, uh, revenge. Uh, no, uh, return of the return Jedi. of the Jedi. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, what, maybe it was, I couldn't have been Boba. Damn. Oh, well, I, was, I, was gonna, I was gonna say Boba. I don't. I don't know if it's oh, if no. that's right or not. Because maybe it's Yoda. Maybe it's Yoda. I think it might maybe. be Yoda. Oh, which one? Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. 
I was gonna say because Yoda didn't uh, date yeah, Yoda, so Yoda would have ah, yeah, so Yoda would have been in Empire Strikes Back. But that was my first interaction to Star Wars was finding uh, that box set, and it was not too long later that um, I I wish I had the privilege of seeing this in theaters, but I ended up seeing Episode One the first time on DVD, and then I was like, whoa, my brain was like, because I didn't know that these were connected at all. This is like very young me, and I was like. Wait, that young kid has the same name as, wait a minute, how is this? <laughs> and it, it spun there and I was like, and I told my mom and she's like, yeah, what are you fucking idiot? Like, of course, <laughs> of course they're connected. <laughs> well, I mean, what, you're seven, eight years old at the time when yeah, episode I'm, one I'm was a, released. So I'm not surprised you're not aware of what, of what prequels are. I, I am a young lad at this point. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and prequels could have been a little bit better. That's all I'm saying. But uh, I digress. We're, <laughs> we'll get into that and everything going on. Uh, I'm very, very excited for this. I know Ryan is. I know, you know, Vo hasn't seen him, so it's fine. Um, I tried. I, I did look. try. <laughs> you tried. I watched half, um, half an hour of one. Is he like, playing no. Pokemon again? Because I know, I know Pokemon, he didn't know anything. He kept texting me and saying, what do you think about this? I'm a big... <laughs> yeah, you should have seen him. Oh, the Jesus. The Digimon <laughs> episode. Oh, my God, it was hilarious. He was just like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't think anybody... This is what happens pretty when much you do half, nothing half but go the outside, episodes apparently. Are done. <laughs> but uh, I'm very, very excited, guys. Let's get into it. Radical ranking number one. All right, guys. Radical ranking number one for Star Wars Part 2. We're doing the top Star Wars TV shows. This is going to get messy right from the start because there's so... With Disney's exclu uh, exclusive, 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 that they've been exclusion? doing. Is that what you were trying to say? I said exclusive, but uh, I meant I meant to say exclusive. Said exclusive. Apologies. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think this Voodoo 1985 is hitting me yet. Oh well. But we are <laughs> we're going into it. These are my personal opinions. I understand if you think they're wrong. I'm right. Shut up. This is how it is. Uh, <laughs> We'll see what the expert gives um, his advice on, so to speak, because I know there's going to be one in there that's going to like ruffle some people's feathers. I'll explain when we get there. But let us start with number five, uh, one of the most interesting Star Wars adaptations I've ever seen, and they were all different. Uh, this is number five, Star Wars Visions. For those that do not know, uh, this is a collection. Yeah, I know. Shut up. You can put your hand down. I know you didn't know this. Um, this is a collection of various different, I guess, like creators that make their own little animated shorts. And when I say animated, I mean anime, like straight up Star Wars anime. So this was Ooh. two of my likes coming together as one. There's multiple stories that were impressive in here. I know if you guys are on TikTok, there's always the sound of it's been a while since I've killed a Jedi and it finds out that the lightsaber is not a Jedi color. It is red and it is two, uh, a former Sith and a now Sith battling uh, in this, what looks like a little hut area of all these different like people. It is like this, there's this one. I mean, Ryan, go to detail. Cause I know that you know this one cause you gave me the little like, well, like, Actually, this is maybe the one thing of Star Wars I never saw because I, <laughs> really? for, as for as big as a Star Wars nerd, I'm a nerd in general. I can't stand anime. I don't know why. It's just a style of anime I can't ah. stand. So my the guy I do my podcast with, he loves it. So he watched it and he loved it. And he talked. He told me all about it. And I was like, see, that all sounds cool. I just can't get my wrap my head around like the anime part of it. it it's I, very I, tough. It's one thing in my head I can't get over is I don't like the style of an anime, but uh, I did hear it's amazing. And I've, I, I give you a little head nod because, like, of course, it starts. I claim <laughs> I'm a big Star Wars nerd, and of course, he starts with the one thing I never saw. That's like the only Star Wars property I never saw. <laughs> it's it's very interesting because this is essentially just. It, let me give you a retrospective. If you've ever seen which I know I'm not including, maybe both seen this, I don't know, but maybe Greg. I know Josh has seen this because I went and after we did that pizza thing, we ended up watching uh, a thing on Netflix known as Love, Death, and Robots. 
Uh, that's what I was going to ask, because the way that you made it seem like where it's different animators, that's what it sounds like. It's 100% like, a, like that, Greg. It's 100% like that. They're all uniquely different stories. You go from one where I was talking about to the next one where it is a band that's trying to audition for uh, the cantina, and Boba Fett and everyone starts causing trouble within the cantina, and they have to find their way out. Uh, there's one where... Uh, it's all based on a pilot and trying to overcome PTSD, I think. It's very, very good. Uh, I would advise... Now, Ryan, I know that you're not into the best of anime. I, it's hilarious because you and Bo are very, very similar. I did an Attack on Titan episode a while back, and I said, Bo, this is the show for you to watch. And I think Bo made it through three episodes before I, he's like... It was like three or four. Episode. Yeah. I said, you got to give it a yeah. chance, man. Yeah, no, my, my buddy told me that too. But every football season, me and my buddy do like pick them throughout the whole year. We keep stats on it. Whoever wins at the end of the season, loser has to do a punishment. He's never won, so I've been coming up with all these different punishments. But he did tell me this last year that if he ever wins, his punishment's going to be making me watch an anime and everything <laughs> quiz me on so I know that I'm actually watching it. And I said, I'd rather just wow. put the ball. That is 100% <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. I want to use that now, but I won't. It's very, <laughs> Don't very, give him ideas. There's some good anime out there, though, man. Like, Ooh, I, yeah, I swear to you, there is. Oh, no, no. And he told me there's so many things he knows I'd like because he, me and him have very, like, nerdy styles. Like, we like the same stuff. It's just, I don't know why. It's just, like, I I, I, I don't want to say it's just, like, the style because I keep saying that. But, like, I just feel like it's very cringy sometimes, anime. All animes, they do, like, a weird, like, hand behind the head, like, sigh, like, ha, ha, laugh. And I just said, this is, <laughs> I'm out on this. It's, like, very weird and cringy. My screen crawls sometimes. And it's just all of anime. <laughs> it is, yeah, wa I, watch I, I Attack on Titan. <laughs> I'm sure <that's> <laughs> the, ti the Titans it's were just weird. the best weird. anime. Yeah, I hate you. Um, <laughs> um, all right, well, then let's move on. I Like I said, I encourage you to watch it, Ryan. It is phenomenal. Uh, even if you're not, if you just forget that they're anime and just – pretend not pretend imagine the stories that go along with it and how creative everything is it is a wonderful outlet like it almost if love death and robots meets marvel's what if like it's yeah. it's very very good um great but yeah no i i if i have to watch anime it'd probably be that one yeah i would say um number four uh one that i recently i would say i watched one and then this was the second one i watched because it was another disney uh one of the first uh developed this is Star Wars Rebels. Uh, I love this. I, I I was nervous originally because these were all new characters that I had no idea what it was about. It takes place after uh, the Empire or, or during the Empire's galactic conquest, so to speak, of how everything is put on. Um, you meet such characters. Uh, Ezra is one of my all-time I love the character of Ezra. I know he's like the young, like kind of like penile Jedi kind of, if that's a word, I don't know if that's right. Um, and this introduces kind of, you meet so many different, like characters that I never thought would be in the same show, uh, Darth Vader and Darth Maul. Yep. In Ooh. the same show, they never interact, which, pisses me off because i would want to see that so bad but mm. you have also the return of ahsoka in this and it's all one of my all-time favorite scenes in star wars when uh they are at the sith holocron trying to collect and escape from the inquisitors and you have the reuniting and showdown of ahsoka versus darth vader and it is beautiful the music plays in the background everything's very high tension and we'll get to this in another thing but ahsoka ends up cutting a piece of vader's helmet off to reveal anakin's face underneath and the line that i will never forget from this show was ahsoka saying i won't leave you not this time you have anakin that's breathing and then all you hear is then you will die. And then the lightsaber ignites. And I said, oh, shit. <laughs> like, this Damn. is nuts. Um, the main, obviously, for this, the Grand Inquisitor, the Inquisitors themselves, uh, not really talked about a lot. I mean, more in Star Wars lore than more of the uh, the movies and everything. Uh, 
I thought were so unique because they were former Jedi or trained uh, like babies that were captured that had force sensitive powers that were eventually trained to become essentially dark henchmen to Vader. Uh, their lightsabers were insane. Uh, they would rotate into like these little, they would escape by putting them in the air and riding them off like little helicopters, which I thought <laughs> that, I, I don't know the quantum physics of that, but it is an interesting, interesting uh, thing Sounds to divulge cool. into. Oh, it's nuts. Um, <laughs> it's it's a very wonderful show. Ryan, give your, give your thoughts on it real quick before I move on to the next one. Uh, Rebels is amazing. Uh, I, with this, with another show I'm sure you're going to mention here soon, another animated show, they there's always some episodes that are like you have to remind yourself this is a kid show but mm -hmm. before i watched rebels i found on reddit like a whole guide of like all right this episode is like a kid's episode you can skip this episode and i watched it the first throw away like that then watch it back regularly like, many times after um i love it you're talking about bringing some characters back and not characters being like in the same show that you never thought um the return of captain rex was great mm -hmm. um and then like, i never thought i'd see captain rex in like a lando calrissian in the same show but there's a lando episode in rebels um thrawn is the one of the greatest villains yes. in star wars Yes. Um, and I'm very excited watching all of these other, these new live action shows coming out and Ahsoka going to come out soon. I'm really hoping we see Ezra and Thrawn come back because at the end of Rebels, it's very like, obviously the end of Rebels, not to spoil the show, but they go trying to find Ezra because Ezra and Thrawn disappear. And they like Sabine and Ahsoka start this whole like journey to find them. And I feel like that's what's going to happen in the show Ahsoka is they're going to be looking for Ezra the entire show. It's, it's really funny that we talk about this and the leak of the Ahsoka trailer was uh, was leaked today. Uh, I tried to find it, couldn't. Um, they like scrapped that real quick for anyone trying to find it. All I've known is that Darth Maul 100% returns in this live action show. There were shots of what appeared to be Darth Maul uh, in really? fighting Ahsoka. So I'm very, very excited to see if they're bringing back what's his name that did the voice or the original guy that did in episode one. I want to see this so bad. I'm very, very excited. This is where it gets controversial because if I had this, if I was going off pure recent bias, this would be number one. But I had to, I had to tune it back because I know that it had some problems more solutions than problems and that's why number three for me is obi-wan kenobi i agree with that honestly is it, this is a new one this is the, the very one? like this is the mm -hmm. latest one it started i believe in may at the end of may uh it had two episodes premiere two episode premiere so already after those you were already a third of the way done with the show which boggled my mind uh thank you but man. yes i know right um there were definitely some discrepancies with this show. We all watched this basically for the return of uh, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan and Hayden Christensen as Anakin slash Darth Vader. Uh, you had some minor things here and there. I didn't think the Reva character was as bad as a lot of people played it out to be. I'm just saying that the show could have happened without her. And it's it's I digress because in the show, you actually have a live representation of the Grand Inquisitor. And I thought, oh, this is going to be amazing. He's like one of the all-time bads in the Star Wars universe next to Vader. And to develop Reva's character a little bit more, spoiler alert, I'm sorry, you know, you know this show, spoiler alert if you're watching, uh, Reva ends up supposedly killing the Grand Inquisitor in episode two. And my jaw dropped when that happened. And I said, what, what, why, why, what is happening? <laughs> like, like I get it. Her, it's, she, let's, let's put it this way. She doesn't develop any character elements until episode five, right? Mm -hmm. Almost as the show is done. And I know like they tried to make her out for a period that for anyone who has ever played uh, Star Wars, the fallen order, uh, I can't remember what the actor was. He was on Shameless, uh, plays this Jedi, and they have the second sister who they try to almost make Reva appear to be. Kind of just doesn't work for me, but I understand. Um, the CGI was a little wonky from time to time in this show. Like, it wasn't 100% great. And Luke is almost forgotten in this show until you literally see him in episode one, and then we see him again in episode six. 
And it's weird because this whole time I'm like, I just want to see Obi-Wan and Vader absolutely tear each other apart. Like how is a Vader that's younger going to master? I mean, this, this series takes 10 years, takes place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. So 10 years after that monumental battle, Obi-Wan is in hiding almost like a meat packer, I would say on Tatooine watching over uh, Luke and the family, uh, the Grand Inquisitors are looking for him. But when Vader hits the screen, holy shit. Like, almost every scene that Hayden Christensen is in, I absolutely love in this entire thing. We have moments of the first time we see Vader find out that Obi-Wan is alive and on Tatooine, he basically comes and tries to lure Obi-Wan out. He uses the force on a mom. And I shit you not, guys, he uses the force to snap the neck of the young kid that is going after that. Like, Vader is an wow. absolute savage. <laughs> He's not messing the, around. Can, no. And, you know, we, we love to make fun of, like, what happens after in episode seven, eight, nine, of, like, for instance, Kylo Ren and Rey buying control with the force over one ship, the one tiny ship, Vader in episode five comes in with a giant ship that's escaping. No effort goes like this. The ship stops. No effort. Throws it down, tears it apart. It's unreal just how incredible this was. And naturally in the first fight, Obi-Wan gets his ass kicked <laughs> by Vader. Even to the point where he's dragged through fire to simulate the burning of Anakin. I do want to point this out that I mean technically technically Anakin was deemed as the chosen one so it would make sense for him to also probably be the most powerful person that can wield the force to a degree so True. therefore I'm not surprised that he has such strong powers regardless of which side of the force he can be on as compared to anyone else who attempted with it. True but it's just the sight of it like you see it and I, I was like <laughs> Oh, I was like, I was like jumping up and down, like freaking. You got time. giddy at the sight of a kid I, getting I, his neck I snapped. Very, very <laughs> yeah, good for it's you. a little messed up there, Austin. I right, listen. I'm saying, <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll piggyback through this real quick because I know I'm, I'm dragging through this. I want Ryan's opinion. Episode six is by far one of the most satisfying finales to a show that I've watched in quite some time. Obi Wan has regained his confidence and his strength. He's fighting Vader on this desolate planet. And just like the fight with Ahsoka, all I wanted was from this show was for Obi-Wan to slice off a piece of Vader's helmet to reveal Anakin. And that's exactly what happened. And it is nuts. Uh, you get to see Anakin's face. It's, dare I say, deranged. Like, it is, it is scary. He basically, this wholehearted confession, I'm not going to lie, teared me up a little bit. Obi-Wan basically confessing that he's sorry that all of this has happened to him. And, and, and Vader, Anakin literally goes, you, I am not your failure. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. And it was just like, Shit. <laughs> and it's there that Obi-Wan finally realizes all of the guilt because in episode one there's multiple flashes of ptsd that obi-wan is experiencing still to this day 10 years later of that fight with anakin and how he let anakin down and he became this well he didn't even know he was alive at that point until episode two when reva drops the ball that anakin is still alive so obi-wan is convinced that he's dead at this point so when he is revealed to be alive it is I'm rambling. I, I'm sorry. This, this show just had me through a loop. It had its problems. Ryan, I want your opinions. Go. Um, I <laughs> liked the show a lot. I didn't think it was anything like, I mean, I, I thought it was really, really good. And I think that fight scene you're talking about was amazing. And the fight scene on the, uh, the Grand Inquisitor's like underground thing, basically from Fallen Order, with Cal Kessis going to do the same thing. But I really liked that episode. I really liked the episode three of him snapping kids' necks and burning everyone alive um the only thing i really didn't like i feel like there was a lot of i, don't know, I feel like it I don't, there's just something missing from it i don't know what 
Um, I really, really liked it, and I do think it's good at number three. Um, I lay out, like you mentioned, him cutting off half of Vader's mask, the opposite end side that Ahsoka cut off. Ahsoka cut off the left side. Everyone cut the right side. Luke's the only one to take the mask fully off in Return of the Jedi. Just a note. Um, and the only thing I didn't like about the finale is I feel like I the Qui-Gon cameo at the end. I loved it. I wanted him in it, but I feel like that was like it thrown in at the last second. Oh, yeah, we forgot yeah. that he was trying to taunt at Qui-Gon this whole time. Let's throw, like, right after the hello there, which is perfect. Let's throw in Liam Neeson for, like, a split second. And we'll joke, like, oh, I've been always been here. I, I wish whenever he was um, getting pummeled by the rocks in episode six, where, like, Leia, he saw visions of Leia and Luke because he had to stay alive for them. I wish he heard, like, Liam Neeson's voice there. And then yeah. showed him at, they showed Liam, Liam Neeson's, like, come on, everyone, you got to do this or something like that. Give him time wisdom to get out of that situation. Then you show him at the end. I thought that had been a little bit more satisfying, but I, I do really like the show a lot still. Yeah, it is very interesting because, as you point out, the episode very well could have ended after that hello there, which is where I thought it was ending. Yeah. And then they show the scene, and I, I was – listen, you might not – I was, like, jumping for joy. I said, <laughs> holy shit, it's Qui-Gon Jinn. Like, literally – not a look, not looking like a day has aged since he got stabbed through with by uh, by Maul, and it was just so nice to see that interaction. But you're right, I, it could have happened a lot easier and a lot quicker, maybe through vocals like we did with um, uh, Rise of Skywalker, when you have all of the Jedi that are talking through Ray's head instead yeah. of. But I think that they they obviously played at the end for. Uh, for showmanship to the fans uh, that have okay. wanted to see Qui-Gon. Uh, I know that we rambled for a good bit of that, but I love this show. Mm. I still couldn't put it at one, though. I couldn't even put it at two because, in my mind, number two is 100%. Uh, this might be where it gets a little messy. I don't know. Uh, number two for me is Star Wars The Clone Wars. This is, I know, <laughs> this is like the all-time like animated show now granted there was an animated movie that happened uh this is what takes place after it but the amount of adventures you see the different battle scenarios you actually see an episode where anakin turns evil at one point through knowing the future which is the craziest thing he's like taming gods <laughs> and like those two at the and rise of skywalker couldn't like move a ship and he's taming two gods it's insane um just various bounty hunters show up. Cad Bane, obviously, you know, he makes an appearance in another show. Uh, it's just everything about this was exactly what Star Wars needed. And I always say I would love a live adaptation of this. I don't know how they would ever do it, but the animated portion of this is always incredible. Obviously, the last season uh, was put on Disney Plus when it originally started. So the final season of uh, the, the Clone Wars was insane. We saw uh, Maul come back and fight off with Ahsoka. I thought that was amazing. We got to see the turning events of Order 66, something that I thought I'd never see in the Clone Wars at all. Uh, how the clones were manipulated and everything through chips in their head, uh, just absolute insanity. Um, this is a lot of people's number one. So yeah, I'll Ryan Project said that he thought it was going to be your number one. I just, I know, I know, believe me. Um, Ryan, take it from here. Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars, is it one for you? And if so, why? Not number one. It, I would I would put this number two as well because I think I know what your number one is going to be and I would agree with it. If it is, if it's not, then I will, I'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but um, no, Clone Wars is great. That whole last season was f fantastic. One other note about it, really, we have to, we all have to kind of bow our heads to Dave Filoni, who did Clone Warriors and Rebels, and he's helping Favreau with all the live action shows now. Created Ahsoka. He's a fellow Yinzer. He's from Pittsburgh. Not a lot of people know that. He's a really? cowboy wearing Yinzer. Yeah, he's he's. I think he's from the South Hill somewhere. Um, so like that, that's that's sick. That like George Lucas, like basically he sat down with George Lucas. George Lucas told him all the stuff that he wants to do with these characters, and so he did the show. Um, and then obviously Favreau brought him back because so he's cool with George Lucas. I wish they would have let Filoni and Favreau take over the sequel trilogy because Kathleen Kennedy butchered that. Um, but uh, I think Clone Wars for me made me like the prequel movies better. So I watched the prequel movies. I didn't really care about them. I was like, all right, these are Star Wars. I loved Revenge of the Sith always. But Attack of the Clones of Phantom Menace were like just too 
awful movies from in my opinion and then i watched clone wars i got to see more like more of these characters doing fun cool stuff mm -hmm. even like the jedis and the council that you'd never hear from like plo Koon and all this stuff who have sweet arcs in the show Beyond mundu and all those mundu like, yeah. yeah so like it made me appreciate the characters that you saw in these crappy movies better which made me like them better all i all i thought about that was what about the droid attack on the wookies <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and he's from mount lebanon Mount, I didn't see Mount Liba, but uh, I didn't want to just throw it out there in case. There, there are a lot of good moments from this show that we got to see kind of into something that I never thought I'd see because he, the Jedi code is always preached on uh, not having any love or relationships. And we get to see that Obi-Wan almost left the Jedi Order at for one point. Not just a teen. Yep. For, uh, for a fellow Mandalorian. Nonetheless, uh, it was absolutely nuts. I and we get to see kind of him and Anakin kind of have that similarity almost, but like obviously it's never found out until episode three. But mm -hmm. um, and number one, this is by far uh, no question in my honest opinion, it is the Mandalorian. Uh, it is by far <laughs> the the show that made me. I, I there are times where I will watch Star Wars and I will unfortunately forget about it at one point and then this something like this brings it back um a show where normally you would think in terms of star wars is cool with the force and lightsabers and this kind of ties into another movie that made it so great for me you got to see everything without that essentially until like you know spoilers one of the last episodes of the first season but rogue one is still, in my honest opinion, one of the greatest Star Wars films, and you barely see a lightsaber in it. You get to see all these different tactics and creative ways that this is going. Uh, the character of Mando is by far, with his connection to Gravu, or Baby Yoda, in this sense, for those that don't know the name, uh, is one of the most heartwarming things I've seen in the Star Wars anything for a long period of time. I really just want him wanted him to... Uh, to transform into Yoda and do an actual lightsaber thing at one point, but <laughs> I digress. Uh, the show was amazing, and it gave the premise that Star Wars is more than the Force. It's more than lightsaber battles. It is about generally everything put into a sci-fi perspective, and I, I loved it. I know, Ryan, I know you got the shirt on. I won't ramble anymore. Please divulge, because I, I have a feeling this was also your number one. I could be wrong, but go into it. Yeah, no, I, I would have had this number one, too. That's what I said. There's only one show that could be number one over Clone Wars, and it's this. I think the biggest strength of this show compared to the other shows is it got a lot of people who aren't into Star Wars into, like, The Mandalorian. Right. In season one, they, like, focus on, like, kind of, like, its own thing. You don't need to know Star Wars to know this. And then after season two, after they started picking up, like, okay, the people are liking this, they start sprinkling in stuff like Bo-Katan and the Darksaber at the end of the first season. Uh, you get Boba Fett in the second season, Fennec Shan from the shows. There's a lot of, like, they did a lot of, like, they start introducing, like, the characters from the TV shows into the show because they knew people liked it. And, um... I thought that was a great strategy. That was a good idea that a lot of people got into Star Wars because of this. Now they're going back and watching yeah. stuff. And because of Baby Yoda. And Baby Yoda mm. stole, he stole the show. Yeah, <laughs> Baby Yoda up. brought all the women in for the Star Wars. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they brought all the women. Um, it's great. Um, but then, I, other than that, though, I think even like the last the three episodes or two episodes of Book of Boba Fett that has Mandalorian, the basically episode one and two of season three, um, it, it was great. Um, the Luke reveal at the end of season two was like one of the greatest scenes ever. Yes. I watched a TikTok where they put I Need a Hero over the top of that scene, and I almost oh, like... Oh, yes. I, I actually, I remember I was laying in bed before I had to work in the morning, watching the last episode, and whenever uh, I saw the X-Wing pull up yep. outside of the ship, yep. I got up out of my bed and stood up and like walked, looked over my laptop, like very like, I'm on, this better be him. Then when I saw the green lightsaber going through, I was like, all right, this is sick. And I like, started jumping up and down. It was great. <laughs> the uh the the line was beautiful it was they called out for help and it was like oh we have one single x-wing oh that'll Great. be help and i'm like it's Great. i'm like this this has to be him like this this is insane and the amount of digital reconstruction that they did cgi wise for luke skywalker's 
young face with Mark Hamill was just beautiful. I thought that it was really him. Like, it oh, yeah. was absolutely insane. A um, couple honorable mentions. Obviously, Book of Boba Fett uh, was one. Uh, I didn't think it was the greatest, but it, it, it had some messy parts. I think that it was nice for people that have always read the lore that Boba Fett survived uh, his encounter in episode six, and they wanted more of that. I would have been fine with an or like I was clamoring for an origin movie uh, with Boba Fett. All I want now is an origin Darth Maul movie. That's all I want, and I'll be happy. Um, the Bad Batch, another one that I've gotten recently into, uh, which we are introduced in the Clone Wars, uh, which gave rise to why the Bad Batch deserved its own TV show and how it's good. And let's not forget the for the for the old heads out there. The two to three minute episodes of the retro Star Wars that you would watch on Cartoon Network at about 10 o'clock at night for three minutes. <laughs> for three minutes. And they were all different Clone Wars battles in mm -hmm. that old cartoon sense. Uh, I loved every single aspect of it. I was always paying attention. We also found the, uh, which I found was very, very interesting for those that didn't know. Uh, Ryan, you probably know, but Grievous. In episode three, we are wondering, you know, he's somewhat organic, but why is he coughing? You know, that's kind of weird. And there's an end scene at the final episode where Mace Windu force chokes his almost respirator to the point where then he starts wheezing because he didn't he didn't have any breathing problems, didn't wheeze or anything. And that's how we found out. And I said, damn, that's clever. Damn, that's good. I was like, that makes so much more sense than a coughing robot. Now we know why it's happening. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That, that was the style of like Samurai Jack, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah, those were good. Those were, I, I like those a lot. I, I watched like the Ventress like fight scene on like the treetops. I forget what the, it was that episode. I think it's Herbert's Mace maybe. I forget. But yes. The, um, the lightsaber duel between Anakin and Asaj, Asaj Ventress. <laughs> was amazing was because we get to see Anakin pick up one of the red blades and basically strike at hers until the uh, until the cliff crumbled and you just saw this scream from him afterward and just all of the Jedi masters feeling this dark tension that was near which if they if they if they felt it then there's something's wrong but it's <laughs> storytelling so it's fine. Hey Austin, um, we have a karaoke time slash impression time for Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> Why did it, is that from Denny? It's from Chip. Oh, Chip. How did, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> huh. Okay. Hold on. I got to like make my voice. It's going to be good. <clears throat> oh, yeah, Bobby. Oh, yeah, Bob. Koji the buddy. Koji the Ah, That's the best I thought. <laughs> that was really yeah, good. That was really good. Don't ask good. me to translate it. <laughs> translate. I don't know what the hell it means. So it's all off the top of my head. Those are, in my opinion, the top five Star Wars shows. We got a lot more we got to talk about, so let's not waste any time. Radical ranking, number two. I don't exactly remember if I had this on the first Star Wars episode that we did. I know that it uh, may have crept it to one of the top tens that I did. But these are, in my opinion, the top five Star Wars lightsaber duels. Hey, you got good comments on your impression there. Oh, I yeah. There's I was four. gonna say you sound like you have some like acid reflux building up from having to do that voice. You okay? Probably <laughs> what it was. I all I'm missing yeah. is like the little monkey thing and you know yeah. a, a bikini Leia, but I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> and you know, e even no, my mom not. commented. My mom's watching right now. Hey, mama, look at that! <laughs> I love. Um, I am very very excited for this. I think it's gonna be very very controversial oh. in a way. <laughs> Wait before you go. Oh God, dang another it. impression. Darth Vader. Uh, that's I'll just take out my inhale. That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the force is strong with this one. Oh yeah, that's James Earl Jones, all right. Uh, listen, I was before I even watched the show, like the Obi Wan Kenobi show. I was really nervous if James Earl Jones was coming back to play the voice because I know that Hayden Christensen. I mean, James Earl Jones is ninety some years old. Mm-hmm. And he's still doing like they're gonna run out. They better have recordings of him because when he like goes, it's gonna be a rough time for the Star Wars universe. But um, to me, the top five lightsaber duels. Since we're talking about it, it is the latest one that I've seen coming to us from Obi Wan Kenobi. I talked about this. This is the second bout of Obi Wan Kenobi facing off against Darth Vader in Episode Six. Um, this was a very, very emotional one for me because we have the guilt of Obi-Wan trying to find his will and strength back as a Jedi master. Uh, the the effects in this, in this fight are insane. You have at one point, Obi-Wan looking like a literal God, just holding his arms like up like this. And there's mountains of like just rocks that he's lifting and just throwing them at Vader. And it's honestly, I think the first time that I've seen Darth Vader use a lightsaber with two hands. I'm not exactly sure, but most of the stuff recently has had him using just one hand looking like a boss. He might have done it in episode five and six, maybe even episode four when he faced off against Ben. But for me, in the recent, how having Vader just using one hand, it was an interesting thing to see. And then obviously, like I've said, we have the mask cut off. And it is essentially one of the most tension gripping, like tear jerking experiences between what was Anakin Skywalker and is now Darth Vader against Obi-Wan, essentially confessing all that he's done and Vader saying, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did. And nothing was more relieving than Obi-Wan in his last line going, goodbye. Darth. Like he finally refers to him as Darth Vader and not Anakin. And it is hmm. so, so fulfilling. I know this picture, Jen, I, it was a hard time trying to find a picture for the second fight. This is their first one, but it is, uh, the first one was nuts too, but yeah, that was more just Obi-Wan getting his ass kicked. Um, number four, Darth Vader versus Luke Skywalker, episode six in the return of the Jedi. This for me was like the gripping moment. We feel the conflict in Vader of wanting to be still on the dark side, knowing that his son is alive and wanting him to come towards the light. It's really funny actually from return of, of or the um, rise of Skywalker when force healing is introduced. Uh, Anakin could have just learned that and this whole shit wouldn't have happened, but naturally they pull that at the end. Um, and then we see Luke almost come to the dark side in a sense where he essentially chops off Vader's hand after Vader threatened Leia to turn to the dark side. And we see Luke realizing cut Vader's hand off. His hand was cut off in episode five. He throws down the lightsaber. He gets absolutely thunderstruck written by Palpatine. And then we finally have Vader picking up Palpatine and throwing him into uh, the Death Star hole. Uh, and eventually we have the unmasking of Vader fully. Uh, and it was, a, it was a great sight to see. I, none of not people would know, but the original movies actually had the old, like the elder actor that played Anakin come back as the Force Ghost. Now you see it where it's Hayden Christensen coming back. All I'm saying is, if he's getting into that, he's got to find all these younglings that he <laughs> slaughtered and absolutely apologized for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, is a, there is a TikTok, I don't know if you guys have known, but uh, these guys at a bar, and it's just, they're, it, Revenge of the Sith is on. And it's the scene where it's like, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? And the guys are just, kill those fucking kids! Kill those kids! And just like, oh, this is this is terrible. This is awful. Like, go on to the next one. But uh, for me, I think there are better fights. Not 
as impactive, but I'll get to that. Let's go on to number three, the introduction of the fast paced lightsaber battles. This is Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Maul. I, this is a lot of people's one or two and I get it. I a hundred percent get it. Uh, from the fight scenes of just in the original trilogy of just going like G, 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 to flipping, like just jumping all over the place. Duel of the Fates is still one of my all time favorite soundtracks to a battle, let alone a Star Wars film. Um, at some point we knew that Qui-Gon was going to get struck down, uh, which mm -hmm. helped you know, Obi-Wan. I kind of wish that Obi-Wan would have stuck with the green lightsaber from Qui-Gon, but that's another impact that we're going to get into. Um, and then we have Obi-Wan striking down Darth Maul, seemingly cutting him in half. And then in Clone Wars, he's brought back, and I'm like, okay, the writers, they, they need something. This is what I'm getting. It is... The, the movie itself is trash. It's hot garbage. And this lightsaber fight couldn't save it from being one of the worst ones, but it was 100% one of my all-time favorite lightsaber fights. Mm. Ryan, you look conflicted when I put it at three. Is this a confliction of it being too low or it being too high? Too low. I, I, think, it, I think it's one or two. Uh, I guess well, I, I get it. I, I'm, I'm curious to see. I, I think I have. I know one of your next two. I don't know the other one. I want to I wanna see. I have a couple ideas, but... I would put this in one or two. So I feel like you'll know my one. My number two is what's going to throw a lot of people off. And that is Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Uh, you have Luke that is slowly learning the ways of the Jedi, uh, realizing his friends are in trouble, goes off to fight Vader on his own. The monologuing, the absolute slaughter that vader is attempting to put on to luke in this is is almost hard to watch at some points uh you're like why doesn't he just put this guy down all the way to flying out into the uh the desolate area of the bespin uh portal and getting his hand cut off and then finally the reveal that darth vader is in fact luke's father I have watched countless. Wow, that's a spoiler times. alert. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, oh no. The, you know, I'll take it from Pitch Perfect. Vader in German literally means father. <laughs> I'll just say that. So, if you're not a German head, I understand that. But the that I have watched countless times the theatrical reaction of people that are seeing this for the first time. And their reactions of, what? No. And because that's exactly what happened to me watching it for the first time. I lost all my marbles. I said, there's no way. He was a spice freighter guy. Like he was a he was a Jedi. And then turns out that he's his father. And it literally blows people's minds. I think that adds a lot to the the feel of this fight, or he doesn't want to necessarily kill him. And that's what's holding him back. He wants him to turn. He wants him to regain that power so he, they can take on the Emperor and kill him. Because the, the Sith, there's always just the rule of two. It's how it always is. I don't understand that. Why not just have a bunch of Sith fight off against each other? But I get it. I get it. Um, this was the surprise to you, Ryan, I'm assuming. Yes. Like, does this is this shocking? Is it like, I can see it now? Like, what's going through your head? I think it's top five. I still think the other one should be higher than this one. Maybe just flip these two because I know your number one is going to be, and I agree with that. Um, I, I'd say I'd say this three is fine. I think it's the biggest plot twist in movie history. Um, fun fact about that: I don't know where I heard this. You can fact check me. I might be wrong, but no one knew the script didn't say I'm your father. The script said I killed your father, and no one knew. Then right before they went filming, they pulled Mark Hamill aside and said, "Guess what? He's actually going to say I'm your father." And the oh. actor standing in to even say that it's just right before they went on, they said James Earl Jones is gonna say, I'm your father, not I killed your father, just so you get it more of like an actual reaction from him. So they didn't that's tell him to the last crazy. second. Yeah, I, I forget where I heard that. That's so amazing. I, that's crazy. Yeah, so I would say don't fact check it because I'd rather that be true than you look at it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm okay if we just make that like you a can retcon history. Forward, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah we exactly. can get my con for history. <laughs> Got it. Um, and the number one to no one's surprise, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Anakin Skywalker, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. It is the most choreographed lightsaber fight I've ever seen. It makes almost the new ones look of shame. Although the, the Obi-Wan Kenobi did its job, the series did its job of the fights. They were really, really good. No lightsaber fight compares to this one. The, the animosity, the, the stakes that are put into place, uh, the, two, the feeling of two former best friends just trying to kill each other at this point. Like, it is as hot as the, as the ember on Mustafar, I'd say. I mean, it is, it is hot. Uh, it is nuts. <laughs> Foranger uh, agrees with this one. You're really yeah, proud I, of yourself for that one, huh? I, I, I you know, Lego <laughs> Star Wars has taught me one thing to remember the planets, but they do key in for Obi-Wan Kenobi that Vader's home base is on Mustafar for a long period of time, which I thought was the craziest thing as to going back to the place where you almost died and making that your, your Salem ground. Holy shit. That's badass. Um, I, I, I don't think anyone would disagree with this. A lot of like a lot of people, this would be one Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan Maul would be two. I just have a better sense of the stakes and the evac, the eventual emotion that is put through in the second one so i do love them all <laughs> chip one uh chip said yoda's fight with the ugly guy wasn't bad <laughs> <laughs> i've waited a long time for this moment there's a free one for you <laughs> <laughs> no do freebies it. do it <laughs> what we're gonna do now is it is time now for the great oh Debate. <laughs> Great debate is very simple, gentlemen. Based on personality, not wanting to be, based on personality and where you come through in your life, light or dark side like do you feel like you're more of a jedi or do you feel like you're more of a sith because all the times of these quizzes that come up uh at one point i will say that i got mace windu at one point who was both light hmm. and dark to an extent and i said okay but which one am i <laughs> like i don't know so Grind Project, who is in the chat, should have decided the order for us. He so did. I don't he like did. Reveal the the random name generator again. So for, Foringer is. says Ryan, Austin, Vo, Greg. Okay. So based on personality, Ryan, do you feel like you're more of a Jedi, or do you feel like you're more of a Sith? Ah, uh, this is this is very tough. I feel like. I want to take the cop out answer. I'm a mixture of both. So I, if I'm any type of Sith, I have to go with Sith. I think I'm a nice guy. I feel like I don't, I, I live very much from like a normal day, very much light side, but like for a while there in college, I played rugby for six years from high school and college. And I had to channel the anger. I had to do all this stuff where I think I can get very aggressive. If I need to, I can definitely channel the dark side. And Good. I feel like, I I can't claim <laughs> to be, any, be light side if I have any bit of doubt in my mind that I would be Sith. I want to get, I think, every day. I'm a light side guy, but the fact that every once in a while I'll get the yellow eyes and the dark side will come out, it's, I have to get dark side. Dark side, I appreciate it. Um, this is tough for me because, like I said, I was Mace when I got it, so I didn't know which one I was. Um, I'd like to think I'm more Sith, and here's the reason why. I like to feel that on the surface, I'm a very love funding guy. I you know, don't cross anybody. I hold my own toes as they are. However, I am very petty when I am crossed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't let, there are times where I feel like I can't let stuff, let stuff go. And that is the anger of hatred that the Sith depend on, it's their rage and Honestly, I think like, especially working out or anything, I feel like I'm a lot better when I'm mad than I am when I'm just 
oh, look, a uh, nice sunny day. I, it's, it's just, it's not for me. In my honest opinion, I feel like I'm more sick. And, and just like to add for you too, you do a show where you're very absolute about what you put and Sith only deals with absolutes. So if you only put a Sith deals with <laughs> yeah, absolutes. Exactly. So, so with all your, your rankings, you have to be. Exactly. Yep. Uh, Chip, hey, says but... your, Chip says you're Hufflepuff. <laughs> Tell <laughs> the wrong show. <laughs> but I, to go off r- what Ryan said, I think I would lean towards the light side in Jedi because I – I'm here to fight your rankings, your evil rankings. So I'm here oh. to battle the dark side. Ah. And that's my so purpose. Is, in that the, is that the premise? Is that your light just to try to dethrone me? Is that it? Yes. Okay. Basically. <laughs> well, we all fight losing battles, Bo, so it's fine. <laughs> but... but I never lose. Oh, that's a shock. Um, Greg, light so, or dark? So... Uh, while you guys were doing that, I went on BuzzFeed and did a Are You More Sith or Jedi? I love it. Just because uh, I was curious. And according to my results, I am 50% dark side. Oh. So you're 50%, so you're 50%, 50% light. light. I'm, I'm 50-50 apparently, yeah. Uh, so that's surprising because I consider my – I would have probably considered myself Jedi just because of the fact that I very rarely get angry or – Nah, very rarely, not like, when it comes with dealing with me. <laughs> i i will say the i i've probably only been mad at you once in my life like mad mad and you <laughs> deserved it so at least it was reasonable so that was so yeah but in terms of like mad mad i very rarely get angry so that's why i probably lean more towards the light side than anything because I, I i i feel like there is something in me but like i just don't have a there's i never have like that catalyst to like get angry or have it come out in any way so don't have the will of the Sith. I do not. Unless no. you put pickles in front of Greg. <laughs> I didn't even get mad. I was just disgusted. Yeah. Foringer says right. he want to be. He wants to be Sith, but he has to be opposite of Austin, so he guesses he's a Jedi also. Again, you fight these losing battles. It's fine. Like I understand. <laughs> I understand the tenacity. You will fall. It's fine. So. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the top 10 showdown of the evening. Go grab a beer, use the restroom. Stay tuned. Let's dive right into sports as I have strong opinions on that. Which college team could beat a professional team in the same sport right now? Okay. There is not a single answer that is better than the LSU Tigers defeating the Cincinnati Bengals. Even if I know the pitch that's coming, every other part of me is still normal. That's why it's frustrating for me, Greg. It's like, it's like okay, if I know what something is coming, I know ahead of time, I still have to be able to do the action to get the result that I need. Okay, so they won three games yes. in 10 years yes. with three rebuilds. I don't lose in arguments. Especially right. about fast food, so yeah. <laughs> you will never walk alone. Guess what? Now you will. Coronavirus. <laughs> I barely touch my girlfriend's cat. The most I'd be willing to do is like just kind of put my finger on its forehead and just like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us is uh, Alex Kazor from Steelers Depot. We are live with Ryan Smith, professional cornhole player in the ACL. Ryan, what all franchises were you able to work with in the NHL? Uh, with Phoenix, uh, Carolina, and Detroit. So here is Moorhead's ranking. Moorhead is my cousin. He is the rank king. Higher Top honest. 10 extra Power Rangers. Ooh. Okay. This is the top 10 emo songs of the 2000s. There's only one correct answer for number one. Why is F is for Family better than Futurama when Futurama is like Star think- Wars for potheads? Like, I know. I'm so- I think- <laughs> I we have one. We have one list. or two that are I'm mad so in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> You're welcome for that. All right, we're gonna get banned.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The force is strong with us indeed on this top 10 ranking. I'm very, very excited because these are the top 10 Star Wars characters. Obviously, Ryan and I's opinions, I feel, are going to differ variantly, I think, uh, depending. I mean, he is the Star Wars nerd. I am the Star Wars person trying to be a Star Wars nerd. So obviously things are going to come about, but I'm interested to see his tactics as to where he goes here um ryan just so you know it will start off you will go 10 i will do my 10 you will do your nine i will do my nine and we will domino effect back from there <laughs> they will be put on social media for those to vote as to who knows more and according to grind project ryan already won yeah of course shut up <laughs> so, so we don't even have to do it <laughs> because i don't have facial hair <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> so let's not waste any time. Let's start off the top 10 Star Wars characters. Ryan, you're number 10. All right, yeah, I think me and you are going to have a very similar list. I, I think some of these characters you might not have in there, um, just based on what we were talking before the, the start, this started tonight. But I'm going to go number 10. I'm going to go with Grogu, Baby Yoda. Ooh. <laughs> um, so I'm putting him at 10 because I think... Is we don't see much of him so far. We most of the time he's a baby not doing anything. Um, the stuff that we see him using the force is sick. Um, he introduced force healing actually before Rise of Skywalker in that one episode of Mandalorian where he heals um Carl Weathers character's name, uh Grieve Cargus or whatever his name. Yeah. I forget what it is. Yeah, that's right. Um yeah. but he's the one who introduced force healing before Rise of Skywalker, like that same week. Um he's gonna be sick whenever he's fully uh, developed and stuff. Um, so I'd put him at 10 because we don't really see him a lot yet, but because of what he can become, I wanted to include him at number 10. Plus all everyone who doesn't like Star Wars got into it because it's a cute little baby that they sold a bunch of toys for, which I have a bunch of baby Yoda stuff. So like, I don't blame them, but yeah, I had to go with the he, one. He's popular and two, I think he's going to become something really sick. So this this list is going to age very well. In my you opinion. have to feel for those frog people though. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, he's he's, he's yeah he's, <laughs> he's trying to eat like their all baby. the babies. He's in all the babies. <laughs> he's, popping, they, he's popping all the eggs in. Yeah. Oh he's, my god, he's it's so um, oh, My number ten actually has seen, is seen throughout most of the Star Wars films. It doesn't really do much. The personality is there. Uh, I just it's he really doesn't have almost a specific role until maybe the last episode. So I'm going with number ten is C three PO um i i just it's there like he is the droid that is the uh very i don't know if i, if I would call it bipolar but he's very like adamant in his reactions to things um he's really not used on like until rise of skywalker when they find out that he can translate uh ancient sith language and they give him an arc where they have to erase his memory in order for him to understand and bypass protocol and then there's that whole thing of, you know of him looking at everyone he's like just taking one last look at my friends and i was like dang that that kind of hits i was like shit that's really sad um but other than that he's just the robot that's kind of there but if you got to have another one on this list he's got to be there uh just for the hijink antics so to speak that go along aside the lightsaber fights and all the seriousness c3po definitely brings the uh the better comedy of one uh that will never be mentioned on this list in one jar jar banks so <laughs> spoiler alert i thought he was number one shut up <laughs> he's your favorite character i remember no, that not. i remember that from the last episode we no did. this is like nickelback being the best metal band shut up it's not it's not <laughs> real that was incredible by the way <laughs> then we go to number nine oh me again back to me yep all right um, so my number nine is Jar Jar Banks. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Incredible. I, I wish you would have. <laughs> I know. I wish you. I would have his dad, George Banks. Look at the comics. His dad's name is George. It's great. <laughs> um, no, but my number nine is Din Djarin, a.k.a. The Mandalorian. I just put Grogu and him nine, t t a 10 9. Um, it's pretty much the same thing I'm saying as Grogu. I think he's going to end up being like way better than he is already. So I had to include him on the list, but I wanted to keep him lower because we haven't really seen all of them yet. Um, I think just the opening scene in Mandalorian season one with the like, 
I could bring you in warm. I could bring you in cold. It just shows how big of a badass he is and how and now he has a dark saber on him. They got the new uh, starship they have, that which Anakin flew in uh, with Phantom Menace. Um, I think the season, next season of Mandalorian is going to be sick. I think he's going to get even better after this list. But um, I just think with, between him and Grogu, they brought in so many fans. Like I mentioned when we talked Mandalorian, that maybe never were fans of Star Wars. So I had to put him on the list too. So he's number nine. Hundred percent understand. Um, this one's gonna be really tough for some people to swallow. It's my honest opinion. Number nine is Luke for me, and I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. It's just wow. listen, listen. When we meet him, he is one of the most teenage angst little boys I think I've ever seen in a Star Wars movie. Like, you know, all my friends are going out to join the rebellion. Why can't I? Like, this is stupid. I want to get off this rock. Like, such teenage angst kind of shit. Now, granted, the character development of him into, like, one of the greatest Jedi of all time <laughs> is there. It's very much there. But it almost, to me, feels like it was condensed. Like, when it comes to Jedi training numerous jedi go through multitude of years of training in order to perfect themselves and luke somehow did it in like i don't know i i forget what the time frame was between empire strikes back and return of the jedi but it feels like there's this giant gap of character development that we're missing from luke's character and it almost feels like teenage angst Jedi Master. There's no, there's no in between for me, which is in what. In fairness, in fairness, he is the son of the chosen one, so maybe it just kind of fit him naturally, you know. Uh, Metachlorians, freaking short Lucas, dumbass. Listen, I know that Luke is a big character to most people, to, to everybody. Me, I, I know, but to me, it's 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 strange. It's strange because I want to put him higher, but there's that just. It's like when we see with like Ray how she's able to progress so fast with very little training. It's the same plot that bothers me because we don't see, aside from like the training with Yoda in, in Empire Strikes Back, we don't see training from Luke at all. And maybe if they showed me that, I would be able to understand why Luke should be higher. But for me, I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but he's number nine for me. I, I'm not going to comment because... Spoiler, it's definitely higher on my list. So I'm, I'll, <laughs> no. I'll hold all my pro Luke stuff for later. Because I, I definitely have a lot. <laughs> I got you. Um, well, then let's uh, not waste any time. Let's give you your number eight. All right, number eight. Uh, I think the same thing you just said about Luke. Why I think people are going to hate how he's this slow. For me, there's so many good characters in Star Wars that he has to be on the list anyways. So I count everyone on this list as a dub. Like, I was like, oh, they, they're high enough for me. But I'm going to go Obi-Wan. Um Obi-Wan is really good in the Clone Wars, the, the, uh, the animated shows. Obviously, with Alec Guinness in the original trilogy, is like the old wise hermit. Um, that's a great role. Him as a Force ghost, even though Alec Guinness hated playing Obi-Wan, he did a great job in the three movies he did playing Obi-Wan. Um, Ewan McGregor is amazing in the show, and plus all the, the – uh, he's the best part about the prequels. He is absolutely the best part about the prequels as a whole. Um, I'm not considering this him being eight being like – uh, a, a jab at Obi Wan. I'm more considering that he's on the list, and I really like him. Um, and I don't know, even like the Clone Wars thing we mentioned earlier, Duchess Satine, seeing that he was not just like this perfect Jedi guy. He had he had his faults. He had his love interests. He had he almost left the Jedi Order. I thought he's a great character. He still is a great character. Hopefully, we see more of him. Um, I just I just didn't put him above the other seven I have. I think the seven above him are just I like a little bit better. It's interesting. I like it. Um, I'm curious to see, and again, spoiler alert, because he will show up somewhere on this list. So I'm not going to get into it too much there. Uh, my number eight is going to be a very interesting one. Uh, I'm going with Emperor Palpatine for number eight. Um, <laughs> this guy looks like he's from Halloween Town. <laughs> <laughs> you broke Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I just say it for the picture. I'm a person that's never seen Star Wars comparing one of the most powerful <laughs> People in the universe to a person that rides a broomstick. God damn you, vote! I, I love. Hey, it. Um, Calabar was an evil dude. Don't don't you mess Calabar. with that. I, I Calabar was an evil dude, man. Um, Palpatine for me is interesting 
because you know we we don't see him at all until i would say in person we don't see him at all until episode six but we know in episode five that he is this all-time ruler that he's somehow light years ahead of power ahead of darth vader and all we see is his hologram originally and then he shows up in episode six and i was like okay this dude literally has no lightsaber how can he be and dude has force lightning i mean he's literally it's a it's a tactic learned by the sith that takes years how many years of training and then we drag back to the prequels of how he hid amongst uh a wolf among sheep's clothing if you will uh and progressed himself further into the senate of power that he becomes this all-time shadow that is making all these moves and the the jedi don't realize it and ryan i know you'll know this why weren't they able to sense the uh the power that revolves around the sith and of palpatine the jedi temple was originally built on a sith crystal a sith holocron so the energy is still there which hides palpatine's inability i know for a long time i was like the jedi can't be this stupid like they see places that are pieces that are being moved but because of that mist of unknown from that sith holocron it's very very hard to detect palpatine until the last moment and again like it's very easy to put two and two together when you watch the end the the original trilogy and then watch the prequels who the the clone troopers kind of look like the stormtroopers and palpatine his voice at times it, we i mean we definitely knew by episode three that he was the emperor just by the way after count dooku's said, good kill him <laughs> chip kill says him that's now. the ugly dude that's the yes that is the, ugly <laughs> that's the ugly dude chip it is just interesting i i i don't want to get into the shit storm that was the rise of skywalker and how they handled this character clone sith cloning chambers and all that it's just garbage i they did whatever they could to save that franchise because the last jedi was the, the travesty it was awful it was the worst star wars film i've ever seen um so bringing back palpatine was the only way how to do it but i digress uh, the ability to hide and manipulate and force his way into power to make these decisions and turn on the Jedi, activate Order 66, get the clones on his side to become the Empire, it all adds to it. I mean, the dude's an absolute monster. Um, he, If I didn't go with my fan favorites at 9 and 10 with Din Djarin and Grogu, he was going to be in there. But what held me back was really the Rise of Skywalker. Like you're saying, I, right? I tried. I, I shouldn't, like digress all the stuff that happened but that's not his fault that's the writers and like so i put that all into perspective so i agree with that i mean i it, the just the line from a uh, poe dameron saying somehow palpatine returned and you find out he came back because of fortnite i'm just, it sucks but no palpatine's a great villain i agree with that i just went grow grew instead with him um so my seven right yep you're seven all right my seven i'm sticking with the sith I'm going to go with Darth Maul. Um, I think Darth Maul is a sweet character in Phantom Menace. Ray Park is a great, uh, he, what he does, he's an X-Men, maybe he's too, he's a Toad guy. Um, but he he was great in Phantom Menace, even though he didn't barely spoke. That Just that lightsaber battle we talked about earlier alone was the reason he's good. But then you get into the Clone Wars, and they bring him back, and he starts all these crimes into kids, and he has his brother Savage oppressed with him, and... Uh, he just becomes even sweeter from this show. In, and in Solo, which I hated Solo, the movie Solo, but just the reveal that he's in charge of Crimson Dawn at the very end is sick. Um, I think he's a great character, obviously from the fight scene, like I said, of Phantom Menace, but the animated shows really, really develop his character a lot. And uh, I think you said it earlier, we'd love to see another show about the mall, like his origin or something. And I would love that too, because I think he you have a lot more you can still do with that character. So. Yeah, it is very interesting how they can take a character that rarely spoke a line in the first movie and give him some of the greatest character development of all time. His tenacity towards uh, Kenobi, uh, the ability to con conjuncture all of these syndicates, like you said, um, his taking on his brother as his apprentice, 
to where both of them fight Palpatine is a great scene. Mm-hmm. And just the overall, like, I don't want to call it PTSD, but I think that's the right term for it. When Savage finds him and he's essentially like half mall, half robotic spider made of garbage. And he's just like this, like almost like he's lost his mind because he just has been cast out into the unknown and from being like very vulnerable to the uh darn it the um the witch sisters what are they what are they? uh the uh uh that the mirror uh what are they called the night sisters the night sisters thank you yep. and you know for for people that have played the fallen order that's the first mission you need to do because you automatically get, you go to Darth Vader and you get the double bladed lightsaber, which is incredible. Uh, you can make a double purple bladed, which is what I always use as just dope. Um, my number seven is everyone's favorite scoundrel. Uh, number seven for me is Han Solo. Uh, Harrison Ford killed this role. Like, a hundred percent it's almost to a point where like is it han solo or is it indiana jones and for me it's han solo although i do appreciate the indiana jones films the character development of him being this mercenary take for hire trying to pay off java to this galactic hero uh that you know falls that makes fun of and eventually falls for princess Leia. Like it is a wonderful story. And then you get into Mm -hmm. the later films where he's a father to, uh, Ben Solo, who is AKA Kylo Ren and see all the, when, when they, when it was confirmed that someone was dying in the first like movie, I was like, Oh shit, don't let it be hot. And (laughs) it was hot. I was like, no, no spoiler alert just for those watching. But yes, as, his relationship with Luke, with Leia, with Chewie, even with C-3PO, the banter between them going back and forth, it's absolutely hilarious. Never tell me the odds. Like, it's just... And then you have the instance of who shot first, of Han or Greedo. Han and... shot first. Han shot first. Han shot first. <laughs> yes, it was just is hilarious that that happened. I know that he is a lot higher on people's lists. Uh, for me, it the solo movie kind of killed it for me. And I know that's not Harrison Ford's fault. That's, you know, the, the writing direction and what they wanted and having him meet up with Chewie for the first time. It felt like a, it was supposed to be essentially like a space bounty hunter, space pirate movie. And it just felt flat for me. I just didn't feel anything from it. So he would be higher on this list. It had solo not come into effect. Yeah. Uh, do you have the comments up Austin? I am looking currently <laughs> Uh, I think this is solo. Get it. <laughs> I don't think he gets it. <laughs> Ryan, move on to number six. I, I, <laughs> well, 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 it, it's really, it's really easy because my number six is Han Solo. Well. <laughs> my number, uh, there you go. Not, he, he's my being number, serious too. Yeah, my number six is Han Solo. Um, everything you just said. I'm not going to just repeat everything you just said. Um, but. I do have to mention one of the greatest, one of my favorite lines of Star Wars, uh, which my fiance ended up giving me a couple years ago, a bracelet with it is, uh, I love you, I know. And she ha- she has her uh, I love you bracelet and I have that, you know? it's one of It's one of the coolest things I have, but it's like literally one of the coolest like lines, which it was totally improv by Harrison Ford. Yep. He, was supposed to say he was supposed to say something else or not, nothing at all. And he just threw the little head on. I know, and that was one of the coolest, like most badass parts. It's always of the best things when it's improv, man. Like I you know, know that it they, it's great. Um, I um, also love uh, Force Awakens. Real quick, I also love Force Awakens. Whenever Finn and Ray, I hate the sequels, but I really like Force Awakens. When they first meet Han. Uh, I think Finn goes, "You're that war general, General Solo," and then Ray's like, "No, that's a sm- that's a famous smuggler, Han Solo." Like, they, like he's known as he has many different hats. And I, I, he, he's so cool. He's just like the definition of like the cool guy. He's this is the cool Millennium guy. Falcon that made it in ten parsecs. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my number six for me is Han's right hand man. Uh, is Chewbacca. I listen. I love. Wait, the- wait real quick. My, that's my number five. We're just doing the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just tag team this. 
I love it. <laughs> Just shows that great minds think alike. So it's very different in the end, very similar to this. I, I enjoy it. Chewy for me embodies all of the lightheartedness that Han doesn't have. And, you know, when you have these animalistic characters that don't speak, you know, it, it, I, I would say like in the English language, because there's a multitude of space languages that exist in the Star Wars realm, uh, and that Han understands him, and then he was like, no, you can't have that. And he's just like, how do you know what he's, how do you know what he's saying? And one of my favorite lines is actually from Force Awakens, where he's like, that thing can understand you? He's like, that thing can understand you too, so watch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Chewie, he's just like, he's the embodiment of like, I don't want to say pet because that may come off as a bad term, but like, he's everything that you would want in a companion, but also furry. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. No, he's, li he's literally companion. man's best friend. Exactly. He's literally man's best friend. Yeah. So, and. The, the bowcaster is always sweet. It's just... Oh, he, it's so badass. <laughs> they, the Force Awakens that I enjoy, another scene where they're fighting, and Han's like, hey, can I see that? And he takes the bowcaster, and he fires, like, oh, I could get used to this. It's like, <laughs> why weren't you using it before? It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, great. But, oh. and we go into Ryan's number five, which is Chewbacca. I, I love that they're so similar. I love this. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually using this as a prop up to get my camera even. But it is a Chewbacca pillow I have. Oh, um, he's he's my favorite character because of because of the fact he doesn't speak really. He just makes noises and he just does like <laughs> badass things and threatens to rip people's arms out of their sockets. And uh, I was very disappointed with how they how him and Han became friends in Solo. Yeah. It's just the fact that Han went like you're like in, while he's being attacked by him. It's like oh yeah, we're cool now. You know my language. That was so <laughs> stupid. But I just love everything else about Chewbacca. Um, spoiler for Ross Skywalker, which is a trash movie anyways. Whenever it made it seem like he blew up with the force lightning from Ray, I almost got up and left the theater. I was with my buddy, and he was like, like he me looked, he's like, dude, I'm so sorry. Because he knows how much I love Chewie. <laughs> and uh, I also love how we got the medal at the end of Ross Skywalker. The only good thing about that movie is he gets the he gets Finally the gets his medal. Finally gets the medal. Biggest snub of uh, Star Wars history. Uh, it was him not getting the medal, but I digress. Um, yeah, Chewbacca's the man, so he's my, he's my favorite character, <laughs> but I didn't want to be completely biased and put him number one here um, because I don't think he's the best character by any means. He's but my he is favorite. Your favorite. Yeah, I was him for Halloween one year. Yeah, I, and... I, tossed on like a, I tossed on a whole outfit, and then my buddy dressed like Han Solo, and it was sick. And, but, yeah. and his future mother-in-law bought him a Chewbacca Christmas ornament. She did. She she, she always buys me Star Wars stuff, and she got me a Yoda one. Shout out to Janet, Yoda. yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, she she bought me a lot of Star Wars stuff. Ever since she found out like Star Wars, she's loads up me Star Wars stuff. I love and it. Isn't that the greatest thing? Is that when you find a hobby and they just flood you with it? It's yeah, it's absolutely. amazing. Um, my number five uh, is going to be Yoda, uh, the master of talking backwards. Um, it's always the, the running joke is, hey, why is Episode four, five, six ahead of one, two, and three? It's like in charge of planning i was <laughs> that's the best you know austin um, the older you get the more you look like yoda <laughs> i'll <bad>. take that <laughs> i'll take it as when he was his powerful self and not his uh basically which when we see him in episode five i'm like what the heck is this thing like it's running through garbage like running around like <laughs> Drama to see. I was like, so <laughs> um, but we find out like there is nothing cooler than in it is the probably the saving grace of Attack of the Clones, which again, not a hundred percent a piece of sh movie, but having Yoda draw that saber and jump all over the place, being an old old man is probably one of the coolest things I saw. Cause I was like, oh no, Obi-Wan and like Anakin can't handle him. And here comes this old little like green man. He, he's just like, ah, face you I will. And just jumps all over the place. The, the traditional Yoda scream, which we get a lot of memes in the Lego Star, in the Lego Star Wars original game. Ah! It's just absolutely hysterical. <laughs> I love it. Um, 
the, the Jedi Council has their flaws and not being able to sense dark side, but Yoda being one of the ones to survive and the way he did on Kashyyyk and then facing off against Sidious and having the gall to be like, I was defeated. Now I have to excommunicate myself to be better was dope to see. I was like, that's such humility that everyone else would be like, like, oh man, he be beaten now. Like, and he was just like, no, train, I must, must go back. <laughs> and it, it's just a wonderful iteration. I, I love that they kind of CGI'd because the puppet in episode one was just, oh, it was atrocious. It was worse. It, it's not worse than the, uh, the, the emperor hologram first take because that was awful. <laughs> It's awful. Hey, Austin, you ever hear the song Seagulls by Yoda? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> might, have, might have to look that one up. I have to look that one up? Okay. <laughs> I've never heard it either, but Foringer asked that. Okay. I'm feeling it's mm. just Yoda noises. <laughs> places seagulls. I have that feeling too. But Yoda is my number five. And now it is your turn, Ryan. Guess what? <laughs> Yeah, it's my number four. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't, you can't make this up. When you said Yoda, I was just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mind blown right now. This is not uh, planned, by the way. Like, this is definitely not. No, definitely not. no we never plan stuff. Yeah, no, Yoda is, Yoda is amazing. Um, I have a bunch of Yoda gear too. He's one of my favorites. Uh, I love the whole, uh, when you're mentioning Empire Strikes Back, you, you find him, he's all goofy and everything like that. And he's just literally trying to, like, test luke and see his patience and everything like that then he becomes this big one he turns into this like wise like master uh jedi which is great um him fight seeing him fight like you said in episode two is great um but yeah i mean you said pretty much everything i said for yoda so you're taking all my talking points hey, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to i wanted that to i know be i know you're i know i if i want to keep repeating everything you said so i'm just gonna say my number four is yoda he's a beast the, um, the cool thing i will say is that when luke tried to lift the x-wing out of the swamp with both hands and couldn't do it. And then Yoda literally with ease just kind of lifts it up. And we see that transpire into the rise of Skywalker when Ray couldn't lift it up. And then Luke lifts the X-Wing up. And mm -hmm. that's one of the gracious moments of that film. It is again, still an atrocity, but it was wonderful to see. My number four is none other than herself. This is Princess Leia for me at number four. The story of Leia, of and we see a little bit in when she was younger in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, how she was like this little tenacious, not wanting to uh, abide by anybody else's rules, like didn't want to be a princess, wanted to be like a, a galactic scavenger or something, just travel the universe. She always felt trapped. And when we finally see her in episode four in A New Hope, you know, she's mostly prisoner, but she turns into this like badass throughout the whole film. Everyone not knowing what to do. She shoots a hole into the garbage chute, uh, finds ways to get around. And then the romantic angle between her and Han is always, is, 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 it's a delight to see. I love it. Um, her and Han's bickering back and forth is, is some of the best like eventual romantic dialogue I'll ever hear. Uh, and then we get into... Uh, the Laters, which I, it's, again, the later movies, you know, she, when we find out that she, which was weird, I was, I was 100% honest when it was weird in The Last Jedi when we found out that she was force sensitive, uh, which we never knew. Uh, she find she somehow pulls her way out of the space into the ship. Uh, and then we find out in, uh, I believe it's, the end of the last jedi correct me if i'm wrong or not but when we find out that luke actually trained leia to be a jedi and I, again that might be rise of skywalker i don't know but like they, they show the montage of them training in rise of skywalker i'm right. i can't remember if they mentioned that she was trained with luke or not at the end of last jedi I forget. Yeah, so what i'm thinking of is probably rise of skywalker then but it was dope to see that like that's how she was able to do it because when I originally saw it, I said, "What the what the shit is this? What are we doing?" Like now she somehow could pull herself out, and it was explained later. And again, bad explanation, but still that like Luke at one point was training Leia 
to be a Jedi and Leia was succeeding, but she took up that role to be the general of the resistance and also gave the light. Of the chosen one. Also daughter of the chosen one. Thank you, Greg. So I appreciate that. So, but it was just weird because this, this character that we saw in episodes four, five, and six, we never would imagine had one point trained with lightsaber training and had force powers, but the overall character is just iconic. Because first of all, we all thought this was hillbilly Alabama of there being only one woman in the galaxy and in the first <laughs> three films. And then we find out obviously there's more women in the galaxy. It's just always a funny thing to that. that uh, the yeah. Movie. One of my one of my favorite things, uh, Family Guy with their Star Wars ripoffs. Uh, they had Herbert play Obi Wan. He was like, Who is it? He was like who do you think it is? Who's the only goddamn woman in the galaxy? Which, <laughs> this point, it's, it's it's understandable. And they would have like another woman come in. It's like, oh yeah, it's the second woman. And she's like, I don't like her. <laughs> like automatically from the start. Uh, but Leia, she's just a wonderful character. Uh, still holds on to the hearts and everything of Star Wars fans. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful character to say the least. That's why she's my number four. Yeah, uh, Leia, Leia didn't make my list. Um, I think she sh should be on a top 10 list. Like I said, it's kind of tough for my last two picks are fan favorite bias picks. Um, but I, I think I agree with everything you said. I think Leia is great. Um, Carrie Fisher did, does a great job like playing her. And I also agree in Last Jedi. I called it her Mary Poppins through the, through the space. <laughs> That was so dumb. That was the worst looking thing ever. Like literally it's like Mary Poppins and back to the ship. Um, but yeah, RIP Carrie Fisher. She's great. Um, and that's another thing that sucked too is her death in Rise of Skywalker and like her, her whole being in Rise of Skywalker was just tough. Obviously Carrie Fisher died before she filmed anything. So they like recycled quotes and old footage to make like the movie happen. But it just felt so weird and like robotic yeah. and didn't seem like her at all so it was just I don't it know, felt I think out of place very unnatural like too but I, I she's great i i i didn't put her on my list but i i think she deserves it she, she'd be your number 11. she'd be my number 11. that's usually what austin right. says when he forgets somebody <laughs> yeah, she, she'd be my number 11. there we go perfect now we're on the top three top three all right uh so my number three i'm sticking to the women women get get it done type uh, theme here. I'm going to Ahsoka. Ahsoka Tano. Um, I think she's the best character from all the animated shows. Obviously, she's like the main character of the Clone Wars. She's Dave Filoni's like number one character he made and really developed um, throughout the Clone Wars and Rebels when she's Volcrum, which I think you mentioned earlier when you mentioned Rebels, Austin. Uh, they, she was great in both those shows. She was great in The Mandalorian, that episode she came in, and she's going to be great in her own show. Uh, Rosie O'Dawson's playing her. She did a great yeah. job, man. She's going to continue to do a great job. Um, her arc is great. I love how she's not a true Jedi anymore because the whole bombing at the Jedi Temple story arc in Clone Wars. She's now a gray Jedi with the white lightsabers. Um, she's a badass fighter who has dual wielding lightsabers, which is sweet. Uh, she's the chosen one's Padawan. And so she learned from literally the best. Uh, and basically grand Padawan of Obi-Wan. So it's like a nice little coaching tree. I always call the masters like the coaching trees. Uh, and makes sense. She's, in a, she's in a great coaching tree uh, that she's just badass. And I can't wait to see her more live action because Bill, the Bill Belichick of the Star Wars coaching. Oh, yeah. Movie, so yeah this is the Belichick tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, my number three goes out to the little robot that made me love Star Wars. Number three is R2-D2 for me. Mm -hmm. uh, when people think pop culture with Star Wars, it is, uh, I'll go with this in terms of Harry Potter thing, of he shall not be named because he's going to come later, and R2-D2. Those are the two that always pop into the heads of fans. Uh, R2, a seemingly almost this like childlike attitude uh, in a robot, which is amazing because you know when you grow up, you think that robots don't, or they're not supposed to, you know, I robot, not supposed to have emotions. You know, Will Smith learned the hard way in that one. But <laughs> you see almost this like wonderful, playful side 
to the almost not I don't want to say narcissistic but very like kind of egotistic of C3PO and they clash and it is a wonderful chemistry that they have and to see I'll tell you this in episode three when he was facing off against those two super battle droids and lit them all with oil and then put his rockets out I stood up and I said you go R2 you go you're not just something that opens doors you can kick ass too <laughs> It was it was very heartwarming for me to see that uh, he's just he's he's there. I mean, he has been there from the very beginning of Star Wars, and nothing was harder than me watching in Episode Three when Anakin tells R two to stay with the ship on Mustafar, and that's the last time that R two sees Anakin. Yeah, it's almost wow. like leaving your dog and saying that you'll be back and you don't come back. Like it, it, that really affected me pretty hard, especially when like, you know, Vader would come, like Vader would come across R2 and it just wasn't the same. Like it really wasn't the same. So that emotional effect has me put with that R2 at number three. Yeah, no, R2, what I you might need to think about it, but I think he's one of the, him and C-3PO maybe are the only characters making it through all nine movies. I think, yeah, because I think even they were at the end of Rogue One, I think, yeah. when uh, when the plans got delivered. So I think they're the only two that have made it through every single... Solo's the only one not. They're not in Solo, but I think in the mainline movies. They were in Rogue One. They're outside the Yavin Temple base as yeah. they go off on their mission, both of them. The R2, I... So I didn't like C-3PO at number 10. I really like R2-D2. I don't like C-3PO. That's why I don't like him. But uh, R2 is the perfect de- uh, explanation for him. Like you said, he's like a dog. He's like a smarter dog who really like does a lot more like giving Luke the lightsaber on Jabba's palace, uh, on the barge, and all that stuff. He's like a dog who does more than dogs do. I, li- I like R2. He's on my list. Dogs learn new tricks. So Yeah, yeah so exactly. Um, all right. Yeah, he's not on my list, but my number two, I told you I could come back to it. You have him criminally low. I got to <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Um, Luke Skywalker is the original main character. You can say everything's about Anakin because he's the chosen one and all uh, Darth Vader and stuff. But Luke Skywalker is the main char- the original main character of the first three movies. Um, he's a great story of being a farm kid. Thinking he wants to go pick up uh, parts at Toshi Station. And then he gets thrown into this life of uh, space wizardry. Um, his aunt and uncle raised him, got burnt alive right from his face, and he just said, "All right, this is my life now. I got to keep rolling with it." Um, I, I you, it, the training on D- Dagobah, I think people it wasn't as much as years and years in Jedi Temple, but I think people also don't realize how long it is. It's not just a couple of days; it's like a, several re- weeks. He's there. Yeah. Um, the timeline just doesn't show you because it's moving and when it's packed at all. Um, I think he's he's the when I, I mentioned off the top, I watched Star Wars when I was home from school all the time. And not, it's kind of like this, but like I'm blonde. So the main character is blonde. And I'm like, hey, I like him. I can see myself like him. I want to I want to be like him. He's the man. Um, he has a, uh, a great arc too with his arm getting cut off. His father is his villain. All this stuff. He's in very, he's the lowest point of his life. Next movie comes back, frees his friends and becomes a total badass. Um, I also like a lot in the sequels. I hate the sequels. I like Luke's arc in the sequels. I know a lot of people don't, but him, basically his nephew failing him, not failing him, but he, he fails his nephew. He goes to his life of exile like Yoda did, but he didn't quite do the same as Yoda. He becomes a curmudgeon. He doesn't want to in tune the Force anything. Ray opened his eyes, got him back into the Force, and he comes back. He's a hero at the end of Last Jedi and a great cameo in Rise of Skywalker. Um, no, yeah, I Luke is my favorite character, probably. It's him and Chewbacca, one A, one B, uh, and I like I said, he's the original main character. He's the original like badass. So I had to go with Luke. I understand, and, my and he number- almost and he almost brought Vader back to the light side, which he eventually did. He eventually yeah. did. Obi Wan couldn't, Ahsoka couldn't. Year he, no one could except for his own son, uh, and. Also, Mandalorian, I said, that's a badass hand with Luke coming in and saving the day. True. Um, my number two is, we're going to talk about criminally low. Uh, my number two is one that you have criminally low, and you explained why. My number two is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, 
listen, you can joke about it being you and McGregor, but it's Obi Wan's arc normally was amazing, and then I watched Obi Wan Kenobi, and it unlocked so much more to the character that you know whatever whatever happened to him when he became Ben and just trying to do about his thing he was hiding he was you know afraid something that we've never seen obi-wan before i mean he's been in tough situations but he's never felt fear like which is one of my the great points about that show was when he saw vader we saw anakin as vader it unlocked fright that i've never seen before out of obi-wan and just with him like his love interest, the conflict with Maul and Clone Wars, the relationship, bending, tearing, whatever you want to call it with Anakin was amazing. And then coming back in episode four as this old man fighting Vader is probably now what I know and I know it's most it's satisfying because he know he knew that he wasn't going to survive that. So he eventually gave himself to rise up into the force and become one with the force entirely. And it's just that I love characters that have this almost roller coaster kind of scenario with how they're going in their life. And Obi-Wan, after Kenobi, holy shit, definitely has the second most roller coaster experience in the entire Star Wars saga. Oh yeah, no, I I agree with everything you said. I mean, I had everyone an eight, but like I think I mentioned, I mentioned him there. It's not a slight at him. I still think he's an amazing character, and I, and I think you nailed the head, uh, the hit the nail on the head with that one. Um, I feel like we both, like we both have this as our one. Yeah, I think you guys so, should say your one is at the same time. I I, I, I was a figure that too. Um, you want to count yeah, down? I, yeah, go ahead, mean, count down. Yeah, You're right. Three, two, one. Anakin slash Darth Vader. Vader. Yep. Yep. Anakin slash Darth Vader. Has to be. It's, Has to be. The picture I have that I found was amazing because it's just a shot of Anakin and you have the right side of his face like photoshopped into Vader. And it's just so cool. Like seeing now the kid version sucked. The kid version of Anakin was terrible. It was awful. And then Attack of the Clones is the only thing I got from that is that he didn't like sand. That's the only thing I didn't get from that. It's coarse, it's rough, and I don't like it. And that he can <laughs> slaughter uh, exactly. Tuscan Raiders without ease. But it's not until episode three that Hayden Christensen really like divulges into this manic character of unprecedented talent. And we see that when you know a lot of people that hated on the prequels, when they saw the last three films, all they wanted was for Hayden to come back. And that says something about the it, franchise. Yeah, and, and it wasn't Hayden that was bad about it. It was the writing of the prequels. Of course, yeah. George Lucas is George Lucas is a, a great mind, but he can't write for shit and can't yeah. direct. Um but he's his mind all of his ideas are great. And it can yeah Hayden Christensen did what he had to with his character with like what is written. And what really gave me hope about uh Hayden Christian coming back for Obi Wan is that I heard he watched the Clone Wars and watched yeah. that Anakin to kind of get prepped in the role, which I thought was a great move by him because he knows how to be Anakin. He's a great Anakin. He just didn't have good writing. So you look at good writing with that same character, then you know how to do it. Um, and I, I think, like Greg was saying the entire time, the uh, he's the chosen one. He's the chosen one. He did fulfill his destiny. He did take out Palpatine. Took him a couple years of slaughtering random kids in the streets, like like you mentioned earlier. But eventually did. Um, but yeah, no, he's the perfect arc, perfect villain too. When he's on Anakin, we keep talking about Anakin. When he's Vader, he's the most badass villain ever. And you know it's a really good villain whenever people like him. Like when if, if the villain mm -hmm. is someone people like, it's a good villain. I don't know if you guys like Game of Thrones. I love Cersei because she was such a great villain. But right. like it's but but like she you shouldn't like her because she's a villain i just liked her because she's sweet that's vader vader will always be one of the coolest badass villains we use this term a lot in terms of wrestling when if a heel can make a crowd pop that that heel deserves love uh 
And there have been multitudes. You can talk about Roman Reigns now with the, the amount of heat that he gets. Corporate. He's the, the corporate Reigns now or whatever it corporate is. Corporate Reigns, yeah. So, um, I mean, Anakin was badass. Vader is an unstoppable killing machine that has still has that like feeling of what could come next and that's it's it's the perfect when we talk about the top villains there is no question that darth vader is number one across the board oh so. yeah absolutely and that's it we will put these on social media uh you know what is weird greg hmm. he's not by the gavel so he'll have to go and get the gavel <laughs> Or just pretend to, you know. No, no pretending like, here, hey. Greg. We're we're kings. We're not false kings. You should know this. Um, well, you're the king, well, at, technically. I'm, as I'm I go get the gavel, light. let Ryan have some words. Yeah, Any, Ryan, anything you want to talk about, Ryan? Talk about oh, yeah. the podcast. What you do? Like, I'm very excited to hear what you got in store for you, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I I think I mentioned a few times throughout this whole show. I do have my own podcast. Me and my buddy guy, which is always funny to say, my buddy guy. Um, his real name's Steve, but we call him Guy. We met in college. He's my he's in my fraternity. Uh, after many nights drunk at parties, debating uh, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, as well as like sports. Like we're nerds for everything, including sports. We're big sports nerds too. So after years of arguing drunk at parties, we decided we should put a microphone in front of our mouths when we do it. So we are about to. Have, I think we're about to record episode 148 next tomorrow. We're going on for a while. It's called Talking Dirty, presented by Dairy J Sports. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We have these koozies, and this nice little koozie. Can't see it in my background, but it's, um, <laughs> they are nice koozies. They're they're great koozies. It all started. I had a blog for a while there, and then after college, I didn't feel like writing stuff anymore because I finished writing papers all these times. So I started. We switched to podcast form. But uh, yeah, just nice. go check it out. We're at Dairy J Sports on all, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we have a TikTok. We're we're afraid to do TikTok, so we don't really post them there too much. But uh, <laughs> those, those Instagram are and Twitter guys, at Dirty yeah. Sports. Yeah, those are TikTok guy. Whenever we need a TikTok done, Bo does them. So we don't even ask problem. him. He just suddenly I, decides I just do to it. do just, it. I randomly Paramount do it. one was good. I enjoyed the Paramount. From the Office. That one from the Office was hilarious. <laughs> um, as you guys know, we'll put these on social media. You will vote to see who had the better Star Wars top 10 characters. Did he dethrone the king? Will the king reign supreme? Find out next time on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. That's what I have to say. <laughs> um, Ryan, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, uh, thank very, you. very chaotic start uh, to this whole day, and we're very thankful that you could jump in and divulge into some Star Wars nerd knowledge for the world to see of course, I'm glad to always be your Star Wars nerd. You're going to call off the bench if you need so. Uh, and then I think you need to come on our podcast too to do a draft because I like to see how the king does in a draft in the draft war room. I've been told I'm pretty good at it, so. <laughs> but who right. knows? This is all speculation for the future. I will definitely be in contact. That sounds like a fun time. So for all those watching, thank you, Grind Project Chip, uh, Mama Whiten. Uh, ch -ch 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 uh, some other people. You're just know. randomly trying to remember everyone, though. No, Mama Vo, no. Morgan, who else? Morgan, yes. No, Danny in the night. He was busy. Of course. <laughs> Word. Uh, thank you to all those that tuned in. Uh, as always, we are the rankings court. We are Tuesdays, six thirty on Twitch, and this was. It's not as big episode of 144. This is episode 87 for us. Uh, we are wanting to hit that 100 mark. Uh, we're thankful that you were able to be a part of that to make that happen, buddy. So, uh, Ryan, again, thank you. Thank you to our audience. Vo. This is going to be tough. There you go. Come on. Do you <laughs> like, like drop it? I got to hit the computer, too. Everyone, court is adjourned. Court is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>